So this is a video I've wanted to make for quite a long time. This is a wish list video of features I would like to see added. It is very specific to mostly ground based stuff because it's my wish list. I'm going to put obvious things in there like I wish the Drake Brackham was in the game because that's coming one day and we know that's coming. This is stuff that we don't know is coming or would be cool, new features maybe, and maybe it's specific to me. Maybe you guys will hear this list and hate most of what I'm suggesting. But I wanted to get it out there anyway because I thought it'd be fun to do it and maybe you guys will like the ideas. Before we begin, I want to say a huge thank you to CAG for all the work they are putting into the game. The list is a wish list. This is not a criticism of CAG or the game and I have no idea the difficulties or technical limitations that some of these ideas would run into or an attempt to made to implement them. It is just a list of ideas I think would be really cool and the reasons I think they'd be cool. So with that in mind, let's get on with the show. We really need a compass on the ground in Star Citizen. It's such a simple tool, but it makes a huge difference to navigation and coordination. As you may have noticed, ships already have a working compass that shows your heading as a bearing. And recently, Gravlev bikes got the same treatment. But ground troops and all other ground vehicles have no way, currently, of finding their heading without the help from a player in a ship or on a Gravlev bike. I oh, went east. East is... Is east towards... Crusader or away from Crusader? Okay. I will look out for thrusters then. There are some navigation tricks you can use as a workaround using landmarks such as the direction of the sun or an unknown feature. But if we had a compass on the ground, it would allow so much more fluid communication and coordination both within the team on the ground and between air and ground elements. There are little things like if you have to call contact, at the minute you might say contact left, which depending on the situation can be different things for different people and direction calling like that can cause a lot of confusion. Oh, they're behind, they're behind us. Okay, so they're, they are behind. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> see where you were looking, so you guys went the exact opposite way. It's make, okay. Yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll make it work. Whereas if you use a bearing like Contact 310, everybody around you has a consistent reference to make use of. Same for navigation. You can accurately cover really great distances if you have a compass. Oh, two three seven two four zero. Remind me again, how long is this live session? This was 280 kilometers long. Jesus, okay, wow. This doesn't need to be anything complicated either. Literally just a number on the screen showing the current heading would work. But there is another problem with compasses in the game at the moment, in my opinion. And that is that turret compasses are kind of weird and a little bit useless. What do I mean by this? Currently, the compasses on turrets give a bearing relative to the hull of the vehicle. So zero degrees on a turret is the direction that the vehicle is facing. There really is no situation where this is that useful. Certainly never more than having an objective bearing that is relative to the actual environment. If the only bearing you have access to is only relative to the vehicle you are in, it is useless to relay that information to anyone outside of your vehicle. Likewise, on the reverse side of that, if a ship, for example, is relaying information to a ballista on the ground, then unless the ballista is actually facing direct north, the gunner in that ballista cannot make use of the information the pilot is providing. And yes, interplay between ballistas and pilots is important because pilots can lead targets in over the ballista's position. I suppose you can make the argument that the bearing displayed being relative to the hull of the vehicle makes it easier for the gunner of the vehicle to not get lost as they swing the turret around. But holding the C key will reset any turret to its default position, so getting lost within the turret orientation is not a big problem. And as I said, on ground vehicles, the driver has no compass at all, so relaying information between the gunner and the driver even doesn't really mean anything. What would be really great, in my opinion, is if all compasses were consistent and ground troops had the same capability as vehicles for finding a direction. It's honestly the top of my wish list because I have wanted this included in the game since I started playing. One thing that stuck out to me when we started doing all of these PvP events at Skunkworks, the FPS weapons all have quite an extreme damage fall off. And I do mean extreme. Compared to real world ammunition that the weapons are listed as using often, the effective ranges are extremely low within Star Citizen. It isn't a case of the ballistic properties of the bullet, 
The bullets seem to travel fine over great distances, but the damage fallout for the shot seems to be really, really overblown. And I think it may be because these were originally balanced for Star Marine. But we're starting to see a lot more outdoor environments in the game, a lot more longer range engagements. And so I think maybe revisiting the damage falloff of weapons would be a good idea. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, shooting at enemies with a 5.56 cartridge at like 150 meters is like shooting them with a BB gun sometimes. And this would also accentuate some of the weapon differences too. At close range, the S71 does considerably more damage than the P4, but as the range extends, the difference between those two really, really becomes negligible, to the point that making use of the S71 as a long-range rifle doesn't really matter all that much because the P4 does have a semi-automatic mode. Many of these weapons are listed as an effective range of about 50 meters. You will take a few tens either way. Where the real-world equivalent of this ammunition, you could times the range by 10 and still have a effective shots. I think the damage each weapon does within its optimal range is perfectly fine. It just needs to be extended quite a bit. The recent addition of longer range outdoor environments extends to AI senses too. They really need to be able to detect and engage players at longer distances. I think this may also have a beneficial effect on what I'm going to call the AI's waking up process. Wakey, wakey. Oh, fuck, they are, they're, they're awake now. Now, I don't know what's going on into the hoods or how any of these systems work, so this is all, you know, speculation. But at the moment, you have to get seemingly super close to the AI before they even begin to wake up. And with the current server loads, as we wait for server meshing to arrive, the reactiveness of AI is often limited anyway. Using the new outposts as an example, this means that when you reach the perimeter of an outpost, the AI is still in the standby mode, normally. I see contact left side. Cut two of them down, they, they weren't active. But the oh, third one is. It would be so much cooler if the enemy at these locations began engaging you from 100 or 200 meters away. That would be quite something. But in order to do that, it seems like they would need to be able to see you, for lack of a better term, at these distances and have the ability to begin firing at you. Long range engagements were a lot of fun, especially if we saw more of them and they were more common. It would also be a little bit more realistic as well. Imagine trying to approach an outpost, but suddenly you come under fire and you have to choose between trying to eliminate them at long range or finding a route through, advancing through, making use of gullies and cover, maybe having a friend cover you as you move. At the very least, having the AI able to detect you further out and start their wake up process would maybe mean less cases of arriving to find them still in a kind of sleep mode. This one is quite simple to explain. Have you ever been in a big combat event, looking out over a sea of contacts in front of you, no idea which ones are hostile and friendly, maybe it's a big bubble of contacts, where there are some party markers mixed in there too, but as you're cycling through targets, you have to look at each one individually to figure out if it's on your side or on the enemy side. At the moment, the indicators and names in your HUD when you come across another ship are blue for friendly, red for hostile, and white for empty. But within your own party, they can show as blue or red depending on the circumstances. Same for the enemy. The enemy can also appear as blue or red. They don't always have to appear as red. What I am proposing is a new color, green, yellow, something like that, for party members. Having a consistent, unambiguous HUD color for party members would make large scale battles much easier to follow and participate in. Making your own party a consistent color would help a lot with coordination, especially considering party markers are inconsistent. Oftentimes they will not show, and sometimes, as I said, they can be really close together, making it difficult to make out friendly and hostile contacts from a distance. While we're on the subject of party markers, how about adding a kind of rebuild party markers function with a keybind? I know it's easy to just say, why don't you do this without understanding the complexity of the underlying systems. I'm not for a moment criticizing CIG because I think they're doing an amazing job with the development of the game, but some little quality of life changes like this would be really useful.
one last thing on that same note, another possibly simple change for party markers would be allowing us to go into the menu and self-assign ourselves a colour. This way we could set up, you know, red team, blue team, green team, whatever, and have them easy to identify in the mess of party markers on our screen. There are situations where, for example, you may only be interested in the locations of your ground troops in a battle or your fighters amidst all of the multi-crew ships you may have in the sky. If we could at a glance tell these things just by the colour of our party markers, we make IDing our friendlies much easier during a battle. This one is a little more complex, I will admit, but I am lumping a few smaller wishes together under one heading. Basically, I feel that many of the weapons could be given a slight improvement to their functionality that would massively increase their usefulness. The grenade launcher is a very good CQB weapon at the moment, um, but that really is what it's for right now. I was surprised by this when I started playing. The grenade launcher technically does have a leaf sight on it, but that leaf sight's graduations are not accurate for range, so giving a proper workable leaf sight that actually has the graduations for the right ranges would make it useful as an indirect fire weapon or for long range support. Similarly, giving it ammo types like smoke and illumination would allow for some really cool gameplay additions and it would become an indispensable tool of fire teams on the ground. Smoke is used for concealment while maneuvering over open ground for example or when you need to retreat but it can also be used for signaling with coloured smoke. Smoke grenades in general would be really useful, the handheld variety and the launcher variety, although I would admit I have no idea what the properties of smoke in 0G or in a vacuum would be. And flares, we've got another item on this list that deals with visibility at night but flare rounds for grenade launcher would be super cool for illumination at night. This next one is a little bit more out there I will admit but it feeds into the combined arms thing that we really like about the game. How about adding some kind of laser designator for ground troops? What do I mean by this? Well it is a weapon that does nothing really by itself but it fires a laser that paints a target chevron onto whatever the beam is hitting that party members can lock onto. Basically a way of locking onto and firing missiles at something from longer ranges. This would be something requiring a lot of synergy between ground troops and air support, but if it worked at long range, it would offer a whole new method of ordnance delivery. More effective against static targets because the laser would need to be kept on target until whatever ordnance or missile reaches the target. But it would hypothetically defeat countermeasures and maybe even wouldn't show as a missile up. This would obviously come at the expense of a weapon for the ground troop in question, like a railgun or or a animus launcher. And on the subject of the animus launcher, why don't we have more ammo types for this weapon? This weapon actually needs a makeover in general I feel. Updating the missile locking with the new system is one example, but the ability to make use of EM or cross-section missiles would maybe bring it back from irrelevance. I know with this one we'll get both groans of oh not this again and support from those that have seen it done well in other games but this is a wish list so I'm going to put my case forward. Night vision should be a universal tool every helmet comes provided with. I've heard some bizarre arguments of game balance with it which is a really odd direction to attack this concept from. Night vision is just a tool like any other and at its absolute worst if you had hypothetical perfect night vision all it would do is bring the nighttime effectiveness of players to the exact same level as daytime effectiveness. If everybody has access to it then it is completely balanced. The game really sucks at night from a lot of perspectives, especially during PvP events where you can't really use your flashlight because you'll give away your position. From a gameplay perspective it's frustrating to be blind a lot of the time struggling around terrain or in flight and having no real idea what is going on around you, especially when you consider that this is the far far future we are talking about. And from the perspective of making content about the game that other people will see and base their decision on whether to play or not, night footage is just not that great. It's hard to make out what's happening and to the uninitiated it is often confusing why we don't have night vision in the future. CIG have stated that night vision is planned, they just want to do it their own way, not just applying changes to the gamma and green filters and so on. Now I do respect that and CIG do things in a way that I generally like a lot, but since I began writing this script I actually gave the reshade tool a go with some night vision presets and I have to say that the results were very very good. So at least there is one option to get night vision capability until Star Citizen develops its own native system. 
so there you have it guys that was my wish list of features i want to see in the game that is not an exhaustive list there's probably like 10 or 20 more things i think of in certain moments of gameplay like oh that would be a really good idea that i can't remember right now so maybe there'll be more of these lists in the future but let me know what you think in the comments do you agree with any of them disagree have arguments against why some of them would be a good idea um i'd be very interested to hear what you guys have to say on this as always i want to thank all of you at home for watching and send out a huge thank you to our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now and we have a couple of thank yous to give out in this video first i want to thank Gemma tenenbaum who recently became a new patron thank you very much Gemma. that is amazing really appreciate it i also want to thank siani overstreet who recently increased her pledge from five dollars to ten dollars and again i just want to say huge thank you and the same thank you to boiling blood who also increased their pledge recently making that change is a huge help to the channel and it really means a lot that you guys consider the channel worth backing thank you all if you are thinking of starting star citizen yourself there is a referral code in the description that you can use to gain an extra 5,000 credits when you sign up for a new account. Those are also account credits, so they do not disappear with a wipe when those do occur. And we'll be back with more from Star Citizen very soon.